Right, so let us start. We said we want um, our XAMPP to be running. So we come here. We have our XAMPP so that we get to the control panel. So with our control panel, it starts from Sorry, what, can we help you? Ah, uh at -uh. Thank you very much. Right, so as it stands, if I open my browser, we can't view anything because our local host is not running. Right? So it says unable to connect. Uh, an error occurred. What, what have you? So part of what you also need to know is when we are working with our local host, we need to have everything running and everything in order. So we come to our local host. We start our database. We also start our Apache web server. So at the moment, we don't really need that database because most of what we'll be working with is um, design. We'll get to the database at a little bit uh, at a later stage. But um, as it stands now, if we refresh, we'll actually now be able to have our local host displaying some content. However, if you realize when we're working with Windows, this local host gave us something different than what we have here, but it is still exactly the same concept. So let's go to um, our folders. So that we can create our files. So in this particular instance, I can just go to open application folder uh, for this operating system. I then go to my HT docs and I can see the applications that are available. Okay, so for example, the one that we had last time was dashboard. So I can uh, put a forward slash dashboard. And then it tells me uh, about this particular system or this particular instance. So we want to repeat some of the things that you've already done, but explaining how each element can actually be used. So this is our um, web page, or this is our website, whereby we said this is actually running under um, Apache, and Apache helps us to design this. So whilst we are designing this, we can also be able to pick up certain elements uh, that we can use for developing our website or our website. So if um, we are to also go back to the source, which is what we are learning how to get this done. We've got some of the information that we've got here. And we can use this as a reference point to what we want to achieve and what we want to build in terms of our website. So this then becomes our code. Uh, and as this stands, this is our HTML with a bit of JavaScript. So let's get design. Let's get doing what uh, we are here to learn. So like I said, we've got our folders. We'd want to create a folder that we have uh, and we want to create a website. So let's actually create the website that we did in Microsoft Word. We actually do it now with the code, adding some of the content that we want to work with. So to start off with, we right click, we create a new folder. And then in our folder, 
we want to rename our folder and we want it to be a certain title okay so we've got about home products and services that's what we've got in our website so let's maybe call it a shop right it's just a shop we don't have a title yet but this is the name of our website so what this then means is if you're creating a website and you want to upload it uh, on a server it's as good as what we've got here as XAMPP becomes our web server and what we have in this folder called htdocs is our website or is our web storage so we've created shop and shop exists if we go into shop there's nothing in shop if we come back to our website or to our browser we'll then be able to say localhost and then we put shop and then we see that we are now in index of shop so it then means there is no directories available in shop. So we want to then create directories that will then contain our different a, attributes that we want to actually work with and to be able to use. If we go back to um, our dashboard, we've got a dashboard which exists there. If we double click on it, we'll be able to see the contents of this dashboard. So this then means we've got different uh, elements that we can use to create and to work with our dashboard. We also want to do the same for our shop, whereby we've got certain attributes that we then need to work with. The first attribute is maybe a folder that we'll call CSS. So CSS... Uh, simply stands for cascading style sheet whereby all our style sheets would then be stored in this particular folder we can create a new folder as well and we call it img whereby all our images would then be stored in this particular folder we can create another folder and we call it js where we will store all our javascript in this particular folder and then so we then want to now create uh, a website similar to this or a website that will contain some information that will be similar to what we've got there. We then need to use um, a note editor. So for example, we can use this one called visual code and we can then be able to start designing our page. As you can see, I had some stuff that was already there but let me try and change the color so that it becomes, I don't know, can you see on that background? Or oh, it's very, do I remember how to change it? Okay, I think let's just try and work with it. I know it's not very user friendly for the eyes, but I'm hoping when you get to be working with your with the video, it makes life a little bit easier. So what we then do at this particular point, we can open a specific folder. Right, if I come to this particular instance, I can then right click.
Right. Uh, forgive me. I rarely use this uh, this platform, so I'm learning with you guys, so that uh, at least we are at, at the same page. I've actually opened it in the wrong manner, but I'm sure we'll get to what we want eventually. Right, we've got the folder that we want, and we want this to be index.php, and then we've got our website up and running so it doesn't run at this particular instance because of uh, not having any code but let's uh, start by some of the basics that um, we need to have and need to know For those who've used Visual Code before, how do I change the background? Uh -huh. Ah, perfect, 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 perfect. Right, so I think this looks a bit better. Okay, so we want to sort of go through some of the things that we've got here and have an idea of what we want to do. So the first thing that we've got or the first thing that we would need is the doc type. Right? What this simply tells our system is if we've got a document type, we've got a... Okay, I think we're having a, a, a right error problem. Let's actually do it this way. We'll create a new file. We save it where we've got access, and then we upload it to the website. That's a new way we can also uh, learn how to manage our website. Right, so I'll create a new folder, and then we'll still call it shop. And then in our shop, we want to save index.php. We click on save, and then we want to paste... So it's refusing for me to paste. Okay, so let's say before HTML, we put our doc type because we still need to know what that is.
right? So what doc type simply stands for is uh, the type of document that we'll be working with will contain HTML content, right? At the same time, we've got our header, which is the top section of our page, which will contain which will contain information that our search engine uses. So for example, let's just uh, explain what the search engine does. Uh, I hope our internet is working. Let's say we go to our website. Uh, our internet is not very user friendly today. Okay, when it works, we'll, we'll get back to it. Um, so, part of what goes there is the following information. So, for example, we've got this line that says meta character set. What this simply means is for your database, we also need to know the character set as well, which is UTF minus 8 or dash 8, which simply means we are saying we're going to be dealing with uh, characters, all types of characters. That's what we're dealing with. From there, we've also got content, whereby we are saying at any given point in time, different users use different browsers. So we're actually telling uh, the website that it should work on most available browsers. From there, we've got a viewport, which then simply looks for the type of device that we're working with. So for example, if someone is on a phone, someone is on a TV, someone is on a laptop, someone is on any device that can access internet, we should be able to manipulate that by getting uh, this meta information. So there's a lot of information that we can put under our meta, but these are some of the descriptions that we can work with. Then the next thing is our title which then gives us the title of our actual page. So let's uh, put one meta file and our title as well. So our meta file is our character set which is equal to UTF-8 and then our title becomes online shop. Alright, so we can just then save that. From there, we then want to get into the content of our page. The content of our page will then work with a body. And then this body will contain the contents that we want to see within our page. So the first thing we, we can even put is just some text whereby we can say we have a tag called paragraph and this then gives us online shop welcome right so we can then save that and we have some content that uh, we can now use for our particular page okay let's just try and uh, paste this in our folder and then figure out why it was not giving us what we expected or why we couldn't save in our given folder. So we've got our shop. Uh, let's just drag and drop.
Right. So we've dragged and dropped it. Uh, the last thing we had previously was index of shop and there was nothing there. Let's refresh. And then now we see online shop at the top there. We've got online shop welcome. So as it stands, we've actually done our part. Right. Let's see if we cannot be able to edit this in our editor because we want to be able to work with it. Right. So now we've got the one that is in our folder. Let's try and just add some content. And if it works, we can then start working with the one that is on the or in our particular folder. Yes, now we are working with it. So, some of you might then ask, why are we making sure that our content um, right? Why are we making sure that our content goes to the web uh, to the web server? Right, we've got shop here, did it? This is our shop. This is not in the web server. So this particular folder is not on the web server. This folder is on the web server. If we try and run this one, let's say I say we just open this. As it is, it will open uh, the file itself. If we try and open that very same file in our web browser, let's say I say open file. I just want to show you what this will give us. So we go to our shop, we select the file, we click on open. If we open it in the browser, it automatically assumes that we want to download a file. Right? So since we don't want to download a file and we want to view the file, we need to be able to use our web server, which is where we've got local host and then we select shop and then we can view our particular file and it is so that's why we need to actually have a web server running and if i give you any php files you will not be able to run them unless you are running them on a web server so let's get into some content right uh we've got our online shop and uh Unlike Word, this then means you need to understand what each element does. And it so most of our elements, uh, to make this particular lesson a little bit faster or easier, let's uh, view what we have here and we try and have certain aspects. So for example, this part here where we've got section where we've got section from section to section is the part where we've got Apache friends, applications, frequently asked questions, how to guides, PHP info, PHP my admin, and this is this particular section. But that section doesn't only start from here, it actually starts from It actually starts from this section where we've got a div class to div right there. But we don't want most of the information that we've got here. We want to pick certain attributes from this section. We'll not use the code as it is, but we'll design it similar and uh, see how we can get uh, our page to look like that. So we'd want this, this portion to remain, but we'll rename it. So the next thing we have would be a different tag called a div. What a div is in its simplest form is it's a container 
that will contain specific elements. So the elements that we can put in our div would be those that we want to um, use and have as part of our system. So the next thing that we'll have is we we'll need to have a style for our div. So we can put styles and for styles, styles then go to CSS elements. So as you are designing your system, you then need to know how to actually put some of these elements on your page. At the same time, we've got another tag called a nav tag, which we simply put as NAV. And then this nav tag is also a, a tag that we can use to create a menu. I did it. So, with our tags, our tags simply are HTML elements. So, at any given point in time, we're putting elements uh, that are both HTML and some part PHP. If you remember PHP, we said we need to put uh, question mark, question mark, and then we put PHP. And then we put whatever it is that we want to have as our output. So we can then put echo. Uh, our two quotes and the semicolon. And then we say in our echo, we want welcome to our shop. We then say welcome to our shop. If we save that and we refresh, we then have welcome to our shop. And it's pretty simple, very easy to follow. Uh, let's get the next batch of information we want to add. At the same time, we also want to be able to define these sections, right? How were these sections defi defined? The first bit was we had a, a link that gives us uh, what this is supposed to do. Okay, So that link can be designed as follows. We then say for this part, we want an unordered list, which is also a, a feature we will be able to work with. We open and we close it. And then we have uh, an, a link, which is a linked list. So we put it as li. And we also put this as li. And this then simply means we've created our list and we want this list to be able to display on our page. So I'm not sure if uh, I might need to go. Let me go through this once more. First, we created a div, which is this, which we said a div is a container. We created a nav tag as well, which we said is also another container that is supposed to contain our navigation uh, part. We then created an li, which we said is a list, whereby with our list, we can be able to put more than one element within that list. Then from there, we then want to create our menu, where our menu will also be a list uh, similar to this and uh, we can be able to play around with how this looks so at this particular instance we can refresh our page and see what our list now looks like so now we have welcome to our shop and this is what welcome to our shop will look like 
At the same time, we want to then add individual uh, menu items that will be home, about, products, and services. So we come to our page again. We want to just follow what we've got on that previous code. So we have li, we also have li. So part of our learning, you then need to also understand why we have so many different tags. For example, a section gives us a part of our page defined by what that tag does. At the same time, each of these tags can be used. Uh, by various aspects of our code. So, where does this come in? Let's say I create a new file. I then save it as part of what this page should contain. Let's try and save it in, in the folder that we want it and see if it works. So I make my new file as page.css. I click on save. Okay, now at least we are going somewhere. I think I can work with this. Right, so with our page .css, okay, I think now I can save it. With our page .css, it's a file that is external to our PHP file. So what this then means is we can be able to put content in our CSS file, link it to our index.php, and then add specific attributes to that page. So for example, since I've got it on all, or since I've got it uh, this way, I've put some code there whereby I put an asterisk and I put open curly brackets and closing curly brackets. What this then means is I can actually put some code here that I can be able to use in my index.php file. So for example, I can then say font and then I select family. I then select a font family that I want. I can also say font and then I say size and then I can put my size to be 16 px and 16 px simply means I've put it as at 16 pixels so this is an extra file that will be working so with this extra file I can come back to index.php and link this file to my page okay let's also add something else before we leave so we've got font family we've got font size we can then put a background and then we say we want the background color to be that one. I just picked a random color. And then I come to my index.php. I open my angle bracket. I then want to select where this file is located. So to select where the file is located, I simply 
come to my my web folder which is shop which is the one that is on the web server the testing server I go to CSS and then it's page.css so I then need to put it as CSS I put a forward slash page dot CSS I then put uh, my type which will be text CSS and then I put there's another file called rel which simply defines the type of document that I'm working with so this will be style sheet like that so as this stands if I've done this correctly or if I've copied uh, everything that I need if I come back to my page as you can see it's actually uh, white and it's got that text and it's got that uh, bullet point there if I refresh you then actually get to notice that because of my CSS now I've changed the background I've also changed the text I've also changed the size of the text why because I've used my CSS which is this one so at the same time I can then say because I've changed the color of my background I might also need to change the color of my text so I can put color and then I can put brown as my color I click on save if I refresh I then actually have a different color for my text I've got my background color and everything is still in a in a format that uh, I would have created I did so that's how we we start building our page and putting some information let's add our pages so for our pages we then now need to have our home I can simply copy that So we've got our home, we've got our about, we've got our products. We've got our services. Okay, so these then become our our pages or the pages that we want to work with. So if we refresh, we actually now have home about products and services. right from there we then want to add some extra content let's see if our internet finally gave us something okay our internet is not working okay let us proceed we can work without it the next thing that we want to then do is we want to put 
some content. So we can use another div tag whereby we add our content. So with this content, we want to put maybe a title where our title is an H1. And H1, I think we've described. What did we say an H1 was? At one point, I think we, we spoke about an H1. We said it's a heading, and it? So it will be a heading to give us what this page is supposed to be doing. So we can say home, that then becomes the name of our page. And then from there, we can put a P tag. And our P tag pretty much gives us uh, our paragraph, right? So we are then giving people a background to whatever this shop is supposed to do. So we say, welcome to our online computer sales and repair shop. Please feel free to browse the items and services we have on offer. So if we come back and we save, we refresh, would actually be able to see the form. And then, so we've done a bit of the groundwork. We've done some of the things that we want to have. Let's add some more content. The next thing we want to add is a link or an active link. So to do that, an active link simply means whatever text we want to work with, we can be able to put a hyperlink. So a hyperlink is done this way. Simply put our A, we put our A, we then have an href, which then makes this our hyperlink. And then our hyperlink then links us to whatever it is that we want to have. So the moment we've done this, we've created a hyperlink. If we come back to our browser, we'll be able to see that A now has an underlined feature on it. Trying to figure out if we are still recording. Because we might have been going all this way and not recording. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, so we are using PHP uh -huh. to come up with the website. Yes. Okay, so PHP we are using to give VS Code. Yes, we are using VS not 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 necessarily using it within VS Code, uh -huh. but we are using PHP so that we do the scripting. Okay. Yeah. So PHP like uh, like we've got here, this is our PHP, whereby we have said uh, open bracket, uh, question mark, PHP, and then echo, welcome to our shop. So we've got HTML being the broader uh, container, whereby everything we want to have, we need to have HTML at one point. Everything we need to have, we need to have CSS at one point. But PHP becomes the scripting language that we use within our HTML and CSS. So what we are actually learning about is just the angle bracket. We could have been doing all of this without the HTML, which would make it a bit more 
complicated. Because when, when, when does VS Code come in? I saw you open VS Code. When does it come in? Because you are saying you are using PHP as the scripting language. Uh huh. Okay. When does VS Code come in? VS Code comes in because it just gives us a platform to actually start typing uh, our script. Although you can use any other um, a note, note editor. Yeah. So VS Code is just our note editor in that, in some instances. Let's say, for example, we're now doing PHP. Let me do an example on, on this page. Let's say we want to enter something PHP related. So I put a question mark. I put my PHP. I then want to put a variable. So the moment I put a dollar sign, do you see these variables that are coming up? They are variables that are, in general, available in PHP. So what this then means is I can then put my variable there and say that is equal to 127.0.0.1. Okay? And then I put my semicolon. I close my PHP tag. And then I've got PHP content there. At the same time, since we are going to be working with uh, PHP, we need to at least know the background of creating a website. Because we can be able to work with uh, uh, PHP by itself, but we need it to be inside a website. So what comes with the website is the HTML, and then PHP is just the scripting language that we will be working with. Which is why we needed to have a background of how this can be able to be used as part of our learning. I don't know if I've clarified that bit. Okay, are there any more questions? Because we'll still we'll get into working with PHP, but we wanted to have our website um, designed because part of what you need to do is do the design aspect and then do the PHP aspect and then do the database aspect. So there's quite a number of things that we can be able to work with, and we build them step by step, which is why um, I thought this would also help to say, you've seen the easier way of doing it. Let's do the slightly tougher way of doing the same thing, but understanding the code. So part of what we need to learn in this uh, learning is how to actually design a website. So with time, uh, it will make better sense, especially when you're doing it. It becomes tricky when we're just explaining without you actually designing something that you can work with and master as we proceed. Maybe uh, at the same time, like I said, uh, that's one example that we've got there. Let's see what that gives us in case we've got an error. Right? If we refresh, right, we've got an error with that code because uh, I just did it on the fly. Right, so... I think we need to put uh, single quotes. Yes, now our code is okay. So, maybe that's one thing we could take note of. The moment we are doing our PHP code like this, if it is okay, we'll see the page run and no problems. If we've got an error, it will give us a blank page. So the moment we have a blank page, we then know that our PHP has some sort of error. Let's correct this one and put some variable a context into it. Right? Uh, so, like we said, a variable starts with a dollar sign. So our, our variable can be as follows. 
it can be new and then we say new is equal to testing PHP right which is similar to what we put there in our echo but in this particular instance we just want to see what our variable does the moment we've put testing PHP we've got our variable and then we would want to display question okay we then want to display our variable which will be dollar sign and then new and then semicolon what this then means is in this particular instance we've created a variable and we have put uh, a way to view what that variable is so we can click on save we refresh and then we then get to see that testing PHP now exists so what is the difference between PHP script and HTML there's not much different if I can say will have a difference. The only difference that we will have is when we're working with our script, we can be able to disguise some of our information in our PHP script and it makes our website a bit more secure. So for example, when we try to open our PHP file outside of a web server, it doesn't open. But if you open it within a web server, we then have some sort of control over it. And what the user will then see can just be HTML. So in, in our design phase, we actually made it as HTML plus PHP. I need it. As you can see on this page, we've got uh, our PHP script here, our PHP script there. If we come to our page and we go back to the source right our source does not show that this was done in PHP it just shows us HTML I'd actually made a selection let me actually view the entire page source so you'd actually then get to see with our link which is the first one in our nav it just says welcome to our shop so what PHP does is it gives a script but that script, when it's being interpreted by a web server, just gives us the context that we want. So it makes it a bit more secure than just normal HTML. So the moment we have our scripts, we can create various scripts, and then this then gives us uh, whatever it is that we want to display on the page. So for example, you can actually write a script that says, if person X is a student, this person get their details from the server and create a web page. So you also need to at least understand how HTML works, how CSS works, and then you can then be able to design your script to do whatever it is that you are hoping to do. And then at the same time, it applies for all websites that we can work with. Although, what is good about having this as we are learning is you can then be able to play around with as many options as is possible. So one of the options that we'll then be working with is creating a uh, whatever element you want to have as your website progresses. And then, are there any more questions? Okay, if there are no questions, I think we've done quite a bit without a short break. So let's have a maybe a 15 minute break, then we proceed after 15 minutes. So with the last thing that we just mentioned was how we can be able to view our content as we are doing 
our design. So design, uh, the moment you are at least better at it, should take you no, no more than maybe an hour, two hours, to actually just come up with a design and an idea that you would want to have uh, based on whatever elements that you want to have or to use. So we can then say, for example, you see this website that we've got here. It had not finished loading, but you can see we've got um, different aspects that we've got here. We've got our menu. We've got a search bar. Uh, we've got some images. We've got some links. And this particular setup can also be achieved in our HTML. Right, so I think with this we can actually remove for now. Uh, let's add a bit more HTML so that we finish up our page and then see what our page will look like. The next thing we want to put is another type of uh, tag. Hopefully we can exhaust most of the tags in this lesson. And at least you have an idea of what each tag does. So the tag that we want to work with is called a footer. And what our footer simply means is it's the bottom aspect or the bottom part of our page. And our page would then be uh, something that we can use to view the bottom section of our page. So this can be, uh, I think we called it online shop. So we can put a p tag uh, and then with our p tag we can then put the following. online shop website like that so what this then simply gives us is the bottom part of our page having this content so if I refresh it will then just give us 2022 online shop website want it to be site and uh, I think we're good to go maybe let's add one more thing uh, usually you've got a copyright sign and to get a copyright sign we simply put ambassand copy uh, semicolon we click on save if we come back to our page and we refresh we can then be able to see the copyright sign and um, our website is somewhat complete. Let's also um, how can we do this? Okay, let me go to Word. Let me create a new document. Let me design an image. Right. Let's say I want to design an image. Huh. Remember what I mentioned about uh, using this platform that's different from ours. It's giving me problems. And we need internet to use this. So let's just uh, try and let's just try and be creative. Hopefully Okay, it's not allowing us to be creative. Okay, is there another way you can do this? Let's see if there's another free option that is not uh, paid for. Mm. Okay, I think we can do it this way. We can definitely do it this way. We want to create an image.
and show you how we can work with images. Okay, there are no images. Okay, let's 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 be creative. I think we can use our notes since they are e they are easier. Uh, file new note, right? So we want to put some text and then create an image with it. Online shop. Come in. Yes. Right, uh, so let's let's get to just designing. I hope I won't take too long with designing because we we don't want to spend too much time on designing. Right, I think we can work with that. And then we want to create an image. Uh, we just go to image capture. Uh, we open our notepad. I don't think it's image capture. It's one of these. Right, I think next time if we use this one, I would have learned how to navigate anything that's not Windows. Right, so we'd want to get that and make it an image. So we go to capture. So we then rename that and we say online like that. So we want to copy this and paste it in our folder.
Okay, I'm forgetting how to get there again. Okay, open application folder, open HT docs, open shop, and then we save it to image, IMG, like that. So there's a reason why I was doing that. Uh, I also don't have uh, internet access, which is why I had to uh, make an impromptu uh, image. So let's say I put another P tag, which is a paragraph tag. We then put P. We also select that. We put P. And then we want to put our image. So to put an image, we also use an, a tag called IMG. And then we put SRC equals. And then we put the contents of our image. So with everything in... Uh, visual code we can actually be able to view our image right so our image in this particular instance is actually stored in img and then it's called online uh, dot png so we need to know the extension if we're working with images whereby we put img we put a forward slash uh, online dot png like that. This then becomes our image and if we've referenced it properly, if we refresh, we now have online shop showing up on our page. And it is. Then with some of the things that we have also done, let's maybe just add them manually like this. So we want to be able to put a login and a register so that has no particular order for what we had said we want to have uh, we can just put everything in one page since we are just trying to get the basics of how our online shop should look and the things that we are supposed to do with our online shop okay so this is an image and uh, we simply said we put img and then the source and then the location of the image and then we are done with that particular page let's create uh, a new tag which is hr which stands for horizontal rule that will then give us space on our page and then we want to be able to create the next section of our page. So we also put a P tag. And then we type out the name of the page, which will be, or rather the name of the document, which will be log in four. Right, and then for our form, we need to have a form tag which we will have as follows. Right, so for our form, we can then be able to use PHP content or PHP context for our form. A form will simply be a part of the page or a section of the page that we would want to put scripts to. So a form pretty much helps us to work with scripts and we can be able to put our scripts on a particular form. So they now need to know that with, with our form, it now takes us to a database. And that database is also another object that we can be able to work with within our PHP. So each of these tags help us to build whatever it is that we want to build. So for example, anything that we see even on our local 
learning management system, there's things that we can actually create from that actual system. So in other words, we can create our own website that looks like the platform that we use at campus or on campus. So for the form, let's put the following. We want to put a method, right? And then we say is equal to, we put uh, a, a bunch of uh, quotations. We want a post, and then we put uh, a bunch of quotations. So with our method, it simply means we want to know how we want to run a server request. So our server requests work in two formats. We can have a, a get feature. We can have a post feature. We can have many other variations, but for a form, the two main uh, mainly used uh, aspects are our post and our get. So what does our post do? Our post simply gets information that is on the form and it posts it to the next sequence in the loop. So we create a loop and then we've got sequence. The first sequence that we can have, for example, since it's a login, it's getting information that we type in, it goes to the website, it looks in the website, it looks for whatever it is that we have posted. If that information comes through, we are then taken to the next page. If that information that doesn't come through, we are then taken to the same page, but that page then tells us we've got an error. So in other words, this is where we will then come into similar concepts like our for statement, whereby we'll say for value for username, value for password is equal to now, print an error. For value for username and value for password contains information, but it doesn't match the information that we are looking for, display an error. The number of times that the user has tried to access this website has exceeded three. So, lock system. So, in other words, we're then saying, as we are working with our scripting, now we're actually doing a bit of the programming. So, the programming now starts from the programming now starts from how we then use uh, our, our content or what the content will be. So for the method, we will then say, for example, in this particular instance, we want to put post. And then for what we are posting, we are posting index.php. Let's explain what these two are doing. We are simply saying the moment we've got a method post, we want to post our information to someone. And then when it goes there, what do we want to post? We want to post the information that is on index.php. From there, we then now need to have maybe a function now that then says, the moment this is done, we then get whatever is on index.php and we put it to the database or we compare it to what is at the database. So in other words, we we'll then also need to say, after this, we have a function now that picks index.php and it does whatever it is that it's supposed to do with index.php and it does uh, some of the concepts that we would want to be able to work with. So we are just giving a breakdown of how this works and we build on it until we get to a fully functional website. So maybe you can take note of uh, post and method. The next thing we want to do now is since we've got our elements, let's put maybe four elements, four to five elements, uh, where 
we can use the elements to define what we want. So we've got label. Uh, we've got label again. Right, and then our labels pretty much give us uh, the username and the password. So we've got username, we've got password. Then from there, this can become our input, and then we put a type. We are putting a type because we want to be able to define what input we are getting. Uh, we also need another input here. And then with a type, and then the type becomes text All right so we've got our label we've got our input we've got another label we've got our input and uh, we now need the, the last element which is a button and then this is a login and then we are good to go right so this i think uh would then give us a four right let's refresh and see what this gives us Right, so for our login form, we then actually see we've got the title, which is login form. We've got the username, we've got the password, and we've got the button login. I need it. And as it stands, if I click on login, it will actually send our information. Right, so we can put uh, a username, let's say it's admin, we can put a password. And then we click on login. So what it then does is it sends admin and the password. And then it asks you to save password. I don't want to save the password because I don't want to be able to save the password. I need it. So that is how our login form works. But at the same time now, like we said, we want to be able to work with script. So with our script, what our script then does it then knows that we've got a username input. It then knows we've got a password input. So, with database we now need to have a G, a table for username and for password, which is where our PHP comes in. So, if I'm to go to my database, let's say Banava, that local host, and then I say PHP my admin. I can then now be able to create a database for my online shop. And each and every element that will need to be referenced, I need to have a table for it. So for example, since this is an online shop, I go to new, I then create online DB. This then becomes my database for my online shop. And then, if you remember the UTF that we learned uh, whilst we were starting, we had UTF something, right? This is the type of uh, syntax that we can also work with in our database. So we can say UTF-8 underscore bin. It then means we are going to be working with the same type of characters. We click on create. And then now we have a database. 
And then in our database, we can then put maybe four columns. No, let's put it at three. We then put this as table TBL users. We click on go. And then we now need to define what these users are. We then have uh, an ID for the name, uh, for the ID of the person, uh, which can be one up to whatever. We then have a username. We then have a password. I did it. Then from there, this we can leave it as integer. This we can change it to variable character. This we can also change it to variable character. And then um, for the variable characters, let the, let's put them all as 50 and 50. Uh, for the... Now, we don't want this to be now. And then we want this to be a primary key. We click on go. And then we save this information. Right? The moment we've saved it, it then means now in our online database, we now have users. And users is empty because we don't have uh, any input that we have put. And it. So let's just put something. We go to insert. We then put the username is admin. We also want a password. Uh, the next user is user. We also want a password. Uh, we click on go. Okay, we made an error. Okay, so maybe we need to actually put the value. So we click on go. Right. So what this then means is we now have two users. You've got um, user admin and user password. And it right. So we'll then get to the next bit. We want to see what this PHP stuff is about. Right? As you can see, at this particular point, I can go to where it says create PHP code. And the PHP code will just be that. Select SQL is go to select all from TBL users and then this gives us something PHP related. Based on what we discussed earlier, what is this? I think I can increase the size. What is what I've highlighted there? This aspect. What did we say that was? It's a variable, isn't it? So in other words, we are saying we can create a variable called SQL where it's equal to select all from table users and then we close it and then we close that particular uh, value. So all this uh, pretty much means we can also be able to use PHP for our website. If we come to our online shop, we've got everything that is in order. But to be able to match the tables in our table users and in our PHP, we then now need to know how each element is doing. Right. So we've got our variables. That's the first thing. We've got our database. That's the next thing. We've got our web page. But we want these two to interact. And it. So, where are we going with this? We then want to create variables for each of these elements. And it. So, what it then means is, if we are working with uh, our four, we've got a username, we've got a password. So that then means we need two variables. And it. Do we get why we why we need the two variable? Why do we need the two variable? Huh? Yes, but why do we need them? Why can we not just do without variable?
And it so in other words, we are then saying coding. We are now starting our coding using our variables. When we were on the database, we said create PHP code. It created a variable, it created a command. So what it then means now is we then want to link this HTML to our database, to our PHP. So in other words, we then now need to create two variables, which is username and password. And then our username and our password would then be posted to our database. We then compare with what is in the database, and then we display the next page. So what it then means is from the login page, we then need to know what page comes next. So that page that comes next comes from how we are actually defining some of these variables. Because we are then saying everything that we have learned in the previous programming languages, we are working with it, but we are also expanding to give a visual aspect of whatever it is that we are trying to do here. So our variables now come into play, put a chant out some of variables here, so that we see how we can put our variables there and then get to the next page. Are there any questions before we proceed? Okay, if there are no questions, let us proceed. So this was the login form. Let's create the next set of form or the next form that we want to work with. We can put an HR, which then means we've got our horizontal rule again. We put our P tags so that we have some space on the page. And then we want to put our four. So we've designed something. We've got our form, but we haven't designed the register. So question, do you think that our table is enough? Whenever you're registering on a website, what are some of the things that you see when you're registering on a website? Do you just need the username and the password? You need more, de more details on it. Right. So, let's say, let's say we are on this page and it. We want to register. Some of the things that we need to register are maybe username, first name, last name, uh, email address, and then password. And this one. But in this particular table, we don't have all of them. So in other words, when you are designing something, because you are also going to go into aspects of design, aspects of design will actually go through all the three languages. We'll be able to say with our aspects of design, what is needed first? Do we need the design first or do we need the database first? That is very critical because the moment you have designed it this way, and now we need the username, we need the password, we need the first name, we need the last name, we need uh, the email address, we most probably need a phone number. We've got nowhere to put it. And it. So in other words, whenever we are designing a database, we then need to first of all know what each element is supposed to do. And it. So in this case, we haven't actually done more uh, than we were supposed to do. Let's actually create another table that will then help us design the interface. Because we start with the database, then we go to the interface, or we can start with the interface, then go to the database, but you then also need to know how each element will then work. So with the databases, you guys will have a little bit of an advantage because you will do databases as well. So with your databases, this part becomes slightly easier. Because we are saying we need to then define what each element does. So for your register, let's say we want to register. Let's create another table. And then we sort of try and work with some of the things that we need for this particular table. Before we actually create it, 
let's just have a, a some notes to guide us on what we want to do so put a new file and then we want to put the notes for our table right register table what do you think we need we want to register you've registered on some websites before what are some of the things that we need and maybe let's make them at least six six elements first name and it last name what else email Who does six guys? It's also one. Four num. Yes. What else? First name, last name, username. And then maybe password. And is it? Is there anything else that we have left out? Or can we actually work with this? First name, last name, email, phone, username, password. Okay, I think we are somewhat okay. We won't use it at this particular instance. Reason being, when we are registering, we don't have an account. The moment we want to track if we have an account, we then need to have details that are already in the database. So the moment you don't have details in any database, you can't actually work with you can't actually work with uh, how you can't actually work with how we are doing it this way because you don't have record so for example anyone who is not a student here cannot log in to email anyone who's not a student here cannot log in or use anything anyway because they are not part of the system so in other words we are then learning how to actually design our system to have it match some of the concepts that we have and for some of you, you've actually noticed that uh, some instances, when you go to a website, it then tells you, log in with your Facebook. Log in with your email account. Log in with your whatever. Right? That is another aspect of you then linking your current existing details with another website. So in other words, it then means every other website that you've done that for, you now have a record in those website databases. So how do they, they then work? They're working with a database like what we are doing now, and each database will then give uh, new attributes to whatever it is that we are working with. And it, so let's create our database and uh, see what it gives us. Okay, so we said first name, last name, email, phone, username, and password. So if uh, you had not really understood this part, let's redo it with the register table. We go to new, um, and we've got four columns. So we want to add information that we'll use for our register. We might need um, an ID column again, so that we, be, we are able to realize which uh, individual did what. So the first thing we do is we put an ID, right? So, as a rule of thumb, why we need an ID is, at any given point in time, we might need to 
search for a user. And that user might have two accounts. So it might not be possible to figure out which account a user is using. For example, I'll put it in our database. There's a provision whereby a student can also be a worker. And this way. You can be a worker, you can also be a student. It's possible. You can also be a previous student who has re-enrolled. And it, so at any given point in time when that then happens, it then means your details can have more than one value. So because of that, we then need to stress on an ID because the more your database grows, the more information will be required as and when you need it. Okay, so at the same time, uh, we want to have attributes of Our, our information whereby we say right at this particular instance we don't want to have now values we want this to be a primary key and we also want this to auto increment previously we had not put auto increment but in this instance, we put auto increment, which is the AI. What does our auto increment do? Auto increment simply means with each user that we add, we can then be able to uh, assign a new ID with each input. The next thing we have is the first name. The next thing we have is the last name. The next thing we have is the email, the phone, the username, and the password. So we want email. Uh, we need to add three more rows. So I go to add there. One, two, three. We click on go. And then we need to have a phone. We need to have a, a username. We need to have a password. So this is a variable character. Variable character. Uh, this we change to variable character as well. Uh, we can put this as text. Variable character. Variable character and then we are good to go. Maybe we can put values like we did previously. Since we are not using this, we can just put 50s for now. And then we can go to preview SQL, whereby we are saying if you are good at understanding SQL, you can actually be able to have this information on the side. So let's say I'm giving you uh, a task to do a website. I would also need you to give me this SQL. So when you're doing your SQL, run this and then put it on a notepad so that you can show me how you've actually come to this particular instance and if we click on save ah we didn't actually name the table so we want this to be tab table register uh, we click on save and then now we have our table register if I double click we can see what our table register has so let's go to insert And let's add some content, right? We can put a first name, which can be that one. We can put a surname. We can put a, a, an email address.
We can put a phone number. We've got too many characters there. Uh, we can put a username. We can put a password. At the same time, we can put a, a, a name. We can put a, pa uh, a surname. We can put an email. We can put a phone number as well. We can put a, a username. We can also put a password. So we can preview as well to see what uh, each element does. We click on go. And then in this particular instance now, since we have put auto increment, it automatically assigns the user values for us. So if we then go back to our table register, we we'll actually then get to see that our table has got uh, an ID, a first name, a last name, an email, a phone number, username, and password. Right, so this is the part that we then need to know database. From the design side, we also need to then create these elements. Right, design side, do we need the ID? Yes or no? And why? For use account. Okay. Anyone with a different opinion? The girls have been quiet. Do we need the, the ID, the first ID that we've got? But uh, I would want the girls to also answer because it's a mixed class. Do we need the ID? Someone said maybe we might need it for user account, but we don't know what user account is. The next thing we want to do is we just want to design the register thing. We go through a few basics and then we round up. Please try. Let's try. We want to be able to at least master how this works and uh, be able to give uh, the solution to what we are going to. Anyone? Guys, you are the one who opted for this very, very easy learning. The next lesson is on Wednesday, and then the, the rest would be interactive online. We'll do a Zoom one this uh, this Wednesday, this Tuesday. And it, okay, I'll need my answer at the end of the lesson from you guys. No one is going out without giving me an answer, so I think that is uh, fair and diplomatic. I've got no favorites, and I will not have any favorites. Let's proceed. Right, so now we want to design our register. Our register would be as follows. Let's see, did we put something fancy? Okay, we didn't. We've got register form, like that. And then since it's a form, you see how this thing uh, creates its own things. Right, so we've got a register form. We want 
these elements. So I'll just copy them as they are. Control copy. I'll come and then I'll paste them there. And then let me just put Ah. Ah. Abana no buda. Naza abana no buda mis don't pama anza. Kudu buda mno mkuto buda wapa anza uendi. Aywa, ina jetu linda zunza kudara in. Ta kutu kontinya ne lese. Right. Let's, let's, let's proceed, guys. We want to... Uh, upload this so it will take a bit of time uh, rendering and, and the like and then I'll upload it for you guys to have a copy of it so label uh, we also want another label there so by now I'm sure my tags my office one did remember we promised each other an assignment due tomorrow and uh, remember, we also want to have our canvas. So let's have our canvas there. I would like to introduce a very nice way of doing it. Whatever you submitted, you also then get your answer latest the next day. So that at least you know where you stand with your learning. And uh, we interact that way. And it? I think that would be a bit uh, easier for you to actually know where you, you can push and eventually when you are in the industry, you will enjoy working because you would at least have the basics of what we are supposed to know. Right, so I think we've done most of them. Let's actually see what this does. Right, uh, since we've just done labels, let's see what it looks like on our online shop. Right, so we've got first name, last name, username, and password. Since these are, these are just labels, uh, we would need to also put the input. So I will just be lazy and put uh, my input type text on all of them so that at least we see what the output would be. Like that, we click on save, and also we need a button. And in this particular instance, we change the name of the button to register. Like that, if we have it that way, if we refresh, would actually now be able to see what our inputs have done for us. So we are good to go. We now have a register form. We now have a login form. So, question. Would it be practical to have them as they are or to have them as separate elements? Separate elements are needed. Remember, the important is if then else is here. We said if this is that, we do that. If this is that, we do that. So I promised you an assignment. It's a very easy one. Extremely easy one. You are supposed to go and research how we can actually create a code. 
that gives us the login form and the register. Whereby we can say, if this is true, then we display login. If this is true, then we display register. And then, so that is due tomorrow. So today we give the answer ye in the ye ID Tishibuda. Tomorrow we give the answer ye easy Tishipin. Yes. You are supposed to create code that displays a login form or a register form when a certain event is called upon. So in other words, we are then saying we want to be able to say if this is called upon, we get a login form. If this is called upon, we get a register form. And then, so maybe let me also write it down here so that even when you are looking at it online, you can be able to create some code using logic from C programming where you can choose either login form or register form. Right. So, that's uh, pretty much how we can work with our design. There's still more that we can do with our design, but let's just add a few more basics to our design. Right. So, we then want to say each element that we've got can actually be designed to suit what we want. For example, we've got a div. Right? Let's say for the first div, we can give it a title. The second div, we can also give it a title. So, how then do we do that? We can then say, for the first div, let's give it an ID. We then say it's equal to menu. For the second div, let's give it a class. And our class is equal to uh, content. Okay, So we've got an ID and a class. ID menu class content. We then come to our page and then we say for our ID we put a hash and then we call it menu. We open and we close brackets. For our class we put a period and then we call it content. Like that. And then we can add what we would want to see in our content. At the same time, we've also had a, a, a tag called P. We can also put P, we put our, our brackets, and then we can add content to each of these elements. So, for example, we then want to say list style. We want that to be now for our menu. We can then say color, which is the color. We want it to be black. We can then also say a padding. Left. We then want this to be 40 pixels. Right. Let's explain these elements. For our menu, we have put it as an ID, which we have put as ID is equal to menu. In our CSS, the menu is then represented by a hash and then the menu. Then we have our curly brackets. The content that we put in our menu is what we want to see on our page. So the list style 
we want it to be none, the color, we want it to be black, the padding left, we want it to be 40. Let's save it for now. We also save our, uh, our PHP page. We come back to our page, we refresh. Right? Um, before we had uh, put our padding, our information was closer to the edge than it is now. So because of the padding, we've actually added space between this period and where we are starting. Where our document was starting was where our home is, but now we have actually shifted it to the left. So that is what our padding does in our CSS. And then uh, we might be having a bit of a challenge because we have said we want our color to be black, but we still have a, the default color in our document. That then means because we have not specified specific elements, our menu will not give the color to the text within it. So we then now need to further specify whatever elements we've got within our menu. Okay, I don't know if that is clear or if there are any questions. Are there any questions on uh, our CSS, which we have done? Okay, if not, let us proceed. Content is the next element. We also want to play around with the content and we want to change how the content looks. So for padding on our content, we want it to be as follows. We want to put a padding that we have not specified which direction it is, but we want it to be 100 pixels, like that. So if we save, if we save, we'll be able to see what that does. So if you see what happened with our padding, we then made it 100 pixel. But then our padding is not specifying where the padding is going to be. Our padding is only specifying the location, which is our content. So hence, we are playing around with the content and we're also playing around with the text that is above us. So where it then becomes tricky is that when you're working with CSS, you then need to at least understand how it calculates the page. What it simply means is if we are starting from a if we are starting from our page Since I don't have any illustration, I might need to come to this side. So if we are starting with our page, this particular instance here, we can actually name it in CSA. So the distance between this point and that point can be calculated. The distance between this point and that point can be calculated. The distance between the top and where the text starts can be calculated. The distance from this point to that point can be calculated. So what we are simply saying is with the two options, we are saying the distance between username and the edge is 100 percent. The distance between that period there and the edge is 40 percent. So in other words, our CSS then helps us to design how this works. Did you mm -hmm. Fine. Let us uh, round up and then uh, we'll be free to go have lunch. And also, you'll be having my answer as you leave. <laughs> right, and then, so that uh, becomes what we are working with uh, on our content. But at the same time now, we can also have sub-definitions of each of these elements. And then, so what do we mean by sub-definition? We are then saying 
within our menu, we've got a link, which is our ally. We can then say, uh, outside of this, we'll put our hash, we then put our menu, we then put our link or our list. So we had actually referred to it as list. We can then say test text decoration. Uh, we can then put it at none, like that. Control save, whereby we are simply saying we've got our menu, but we've also got this li thing in our menu. If we save that and we refresh. Right, we are supposed to then edit our link, but our link might not have been specified properly. Let's just try and uh, specify that. Okay, we will also then now need to figure out how to actually specify it for a individual link or the links that we've got inside our context. And then I think with that, we have uh, exhausted our day. And uh, if there are any questions, you can ask now.